So let's talk about sand casting right now. Um, as far as practical uses in the studio, sand casting is a really great way to do manufacture because you get uh, an easy to reproduce casting method that's um, very versatile in terms of design. You can ram up molds, you can make copies very easily, but there are limitations to how you go about doing the manufacturing process. So when you have this um, sand, what it is is basically a finely ground silica, just some inert material that's in powder form held together by a binder, and that's either bentonite or some sort of sugar or oil compound that allows you to build like the coolest sand castle ever. But it, it will crumble under pressure, but it will also hold its from, um, form under pressure. So when you're going to put things together, you've got to put it into a frame. And so whatever your mold frame is needs to be high temp resistant to whatever metals you're casting. So oftentimes when you're looking at, at designs, uh, you'll see this, this horrible contraption available from many of the suppliers. Uh, I don't like this design mainly because it's huge for jewelry, but also because this background, this frame is cast out of aluminum, which is a low melting temperature metal. So if you have enough bronze, you could actually alloy with the funnel if you have uh, a high enough heat and a long enough charge time. So you do wanna be careful about using metals that have lower melting points than what you're gonna cast with. Uh, this also has really terrible registration in that the hole tolerancing is very sloppy and each frame has a little drafted portion that's supposed to allow separation. But what it often does is when metal casts around, it can lock parts together and make it really hard to remove. So what I would recommend, these are custom fabricated, but they're very cheap to make. It's just a piece of box tubing sliced in half and then bolted back together with wing flanges, okay? And this allows you to take your mold frame apart, right? And decide whether you want to pour through the top hole, right? So just bolt the wings back together and when you're fabricating it, it's a cut seam and you drill a hole. And I tend to countersink the holes just so when I pull it apart, I know that my sprue button isn't gonna bond strongly to that junction. And so the nice part about it is you can take it all apart, you can ram it up with sand, you can put your master component in, and then stick the top frame on, and while you're doing your packing, you can bolt the whole frame together. And then when you're ready to remove the master part, the core part in the mold, you can unbolt it, and then take off your top frame gently, and then make sure that everything's exactly the way you want, line your frame back up, bolt it back together, and you're ready to do your casting without any muss or fuss, okay? The disadvantage, again, with the aluminum frame is once you're done, if you're planning on holding this vertically, if you don't have these two components wired together, there's a lot of slop and wonder, and they can just fall open from the mass that you've cast in there. So you have to actually hold it together and then wire wrap it or use a clamp anyway. So it's just a lot of extra parts requiring a lot of sand. And if your scale isn't bigger than this size box tube, why would you use that much sand to make a part that is incredibly small? And so if you're doing jewelry in the home studio, this is a good way to go. This is three inch box tube. They also sell it in four inch, so you can keep going up in scale. But that's how I would go about doing the casting frame because it gives you the option of pouring from the top face or from the edge face. Everything locks together with the nut assembly and it's small and modular. Um, a lot of the designs allow you to make one part thinner and one part thicker. You can have symmetry. So you're just doing two small low profile pieces. That saves you packing time or you can pair it up with the double deeps and again, that will save you packing time. We're gonna cover the whole range of um, methods to cast and we're gonna use this little star as our example. So I'm gonna bring that closer to the camera. So this is just a generic 3D printed star but it's got a flat plane and then it's got a nice drafted plane. And what we're gonna do is just see how it casts in three separate orientations to go through what you think about when working with drafted elements in sand cast frames.